Good afternoon. If you have a loved one who <clears throat> has filed for social security disability and then passes away during the pending claim, um, please know that it's not necessarily the end of the claim, um, particularly for social security disability with Title II. Um, there is an avenue for um, spouse, adult child, sibling, uh, et cetera, um, perhaps more than that, um, to substitute in as the party that has the disability claim and prove that the disabled loved one was in fact and did meet all of the rules necessary for prevailing on a Title II claim. Um, the way you do that um, and again, you should be able to do this with or without an attorney. So if you don't have, if you didn't have a representative and you're not inclined to, um, get one, then this would be, uh, even more important for you to know. So there is called an SSA-539 form, and that is called a, um, substitution of party. And let me just see if I can get the, uh, exact verbiage on that, um, I don't really have it up in front of me, but let's see if I can find it real fast. Yeah, maybe not. Okay. Anyway, it's a substitute party. Um, and it just means that you're going to be standing kind of in the shoes of the claimant and the defense. Um, I've had multiple of these. Um, one, even the substituted party was a sibling. And uh, she came to court and testified <laughs> uh, because it was an ALJ hearing. Um I kind of thought it should be a um, a uh, an award on the record, but they don't do those very often. So we did go and, you know, she did answer a few questions about them, but it wasn't like that was going to be what did it. But anyway, the case did prevail. And um, now keep in mind that the substituted party is not necessarily the person who's going to get the monies. Um, that would really depend on who um, next of kin and or a personal representative or an executor of an estate. So whoever the, however, the deceased person, if they had set up plans, a will, a trust, whatever it is um, that would direct where their, I guess, the residual estate would go, those, you know, newfound monies would be part of that. So um, the certainly the health, uh, the the personal representative representing the, the individual who passed um, at, once they're passed, or um, if there is none, let's say the person died in test date, it would probably be then the next of kin. Um, and that is a different form that is called the SSA 1724, which is where once the claimant's case has been won, now the person has to, um, or the suitable person um, has to provide the SSA with an executed SSA 1724, indicating that they are the health, the, the um, I want to say health representative, <laughs> the personal representative or the executor of the estate, or if there is no will, um, then it would be the, um, the next of kin, like presumably where the rest of their estate would be going in test state, right? There's no will. So something to know, this this form is readily available online. Um, maybe in time, I'll get it up on the website too, but uh, I will put the links to the form um, down below so you can get to it easily there too. Um, so again, remember that the substitution of service uh, substitution of a party is not the same as the um, the uh, the person that's going to be collecting the monies. All right, um, that would be the seventeen twenty four form, and that's only a person who has a legal right now to collect that, like they would a bank account. Um, so it, you, you know you kind of have to prove that some things are going on for that to happen. So anyway, yeah, because I have had case where substitute, substituted party was a fiance um and the uh the fiance was probably um i'm trying to think back so he was a substitute party that was fine 
but I'm not sure if I'm trying to remember if, if she had a will and if, because a lot of people don't, right? Um, if she didn't, then the monies she would get would be going to her next of kin, right? If she didn't have a will and a fiance would not be a next of kin. Now, if she had a will and the fiance was in the will as taking her residual estate, um, then that would be a different story, right? But he could substitute in. Uh, he just wouldn't necessarily be the one to get the monies once he finishes the case off for her. So it is probably true that <laughs> a lot of people would not choose to be substitute party if there's nothing to be gained. Um, so perhaps someone who has something to gain from it, um, next of kin, uh, certainly the, the personal representative or the executor of the state should hopefully know to do this. Um, I don't know that they would though, unless they were maybe a professional, you know, wills and trust lawyer who also acts as uh, executor. But for the rest of us, if we are um, the executor of somebody's will um, and they have filed for disability, um, you're going to want to know that because it's kind of your obligation as your fiduciary duty, I believe, to pursue that claim. Um, or you could find yourself in a jam too. Um, and then when the money comes in, it's going to be dispersed according to the will, like you're doing with everything else. Um, and again, if there's no will, family can do this. Uh, check to see who's in line to receive if there is no will. And um, if the shoe fits, go ahead and run with it. <laughs> um, you know, finish up what your loved one started and then someone, you know, will be able to um, collect those or inherit, I should say, those monies um, as intended, I'm sure, by the, the deceased loved one. The same rules do not apply entirely. Um, I mean, the substitution of a uh, substitution of party applies for SSI cases, but the monies are not the same because um, it is a lot more restricted as to who can collect the back benefits on SSI, um, unlike the social security insurance proceeds, which have been bought and paid for by the deceased person. So they have every right to it, uh, like any other asset. So, all right, guys. Um, that's it. Hope that helps. And uh, talk to you later.